Hello, our dear listeners. Welcome to Our Journey Through Cinema. Welcome to the Geek Experience Podcast. In this special chapter, we will talk about the evolution of cinema, from the first short films to some of the best films that have been produced in recent years. With us, Juan Diego Ramírez, Sebastián Parra, and Juan Felipe Hernández. Our journey through cinema begins in 1878 with the first short films such as The Horse in Motion. And the arrival of the train. These were produced by Louis Le Prince, but his technique considered only of several drawings in a row of movement. In the history of cinema, we see some people involved. The most important creators were Thomas Alva Edison, inventor of the incandescent lamp and the photograph, and the brothers Lumiere, who created the cinematographs. This machine was so useful because it can take movements in page. One of the first movies that they did was The Springest Wardet in Paris. After the performance, people were fascinated. Uh, other of the films were documentaries and also very short. Other movie was The Apartment in 1960. What one of the first long movies? It lasted two hours. This was in Wild, White and Black. And this movie were a simple problem. There is an apartment for two gentlemen that work in the same company. They take tours in their apartment, but they never agree. More than all, when they want to take a lady to home. Another movie was The Graduate in 1967. This movie was so important to this period in New York because was one of the first movies that have a narrator and a background music. In certain essence, it is about a graduate man that he gets an old, older woman, but she cheats on him and then he cheats on her and so on several times, until she dies and he decides not to fall in love again. And the last important movie for this decade was Frankenstein, in 1931. This movie was one of the first movies that have science fiction sense. It was about a little scientist that dreamed to create a human body, but he does it. He creates a Frankenstein, but it was like a monster. Passing through the 70s decade, we can find the Diddy Harry series, a cop that takes justice in his own way. The film stood out for being quite violent for the time, so it was not saved for being censored in Norway, Portugal and Finland on its release. But they were a milestone for revolutionizing the police genre. Harry Callahan was interpreted by a young but experienced Clint Eastwood, who gives Harry a remarkable personality and character that will be remembered for years to come. If you hadn't heard of the series, we highly recommend it if you are a fan of the old school action movies. We cannot pass through 70s without naming the acclaimed and considered by some the best movie in the cinema ever, The Godfather, a film that shows all the values of the filmmaker's trade, with a story that went very far because of how everything unfolds, loyalty, betrayal, and family performed perfectly, not only by Marlon Brando and Al Pacino, but by all those who participated in such a captivating movie 
that not only represented a milestone for its genre, but for the entire seventh art that it is still in force to this day. We do not recommend it. It is simply an obligation that you see it even if you don't like the cinema and you are hearing this just because you don't have to do. Everyone should see it even once in their life to understand what cinema is at its best. The development of science fiction in 80s served as a pillar of reference point for many stories for years to come. The movie Blade Runner, based on the book Do Android's Dream of Electric Ship by Philip K. Dick, the movie at first was criticized by a slow, complex and not have a proper rhythm for an action movie, a fact that proves the movie had a truly advanced perspective for his time. Nowadays fans of any genre of cinema Try to find a movie with those characteristics, a movie with a complex and not a stereotype plot. That's why today Blade Runner is considered as a cult movie and I didn't even mention the Ashtonian visuals. The Back to the Future trilogy, unlike Blade Runner, was a box office hit. The three movies almost reached a billion dollars and it is not for less because all dead people were amazed by the future that was presented. And today, it is still very popular. They are movies where every little loose end up being brilliantly tied, achieving perfection. How many references to the DeLorean have you seen in the pop culture? Sometimes I think the DeLorean itself is the pop culture. The influence caused by this movie must be one of the most influential movies of all time. A safety pin for the cinema do not think that the movie is very childish because of some McFly jokes. It is a movie that will entertain anyone of any age. It must have come so far for a reason. The horror genre also played an important role in the 70s, 80s and 90s. For example, The Shining, a story where we see the Jack Torrance descent into madness. Michael Myers in Halloween, a natural born teen killer. The horrifying Chainsaw Massacre, a nightmare on Elm Street a story of a child molester who returns from the dead. Predator, a movie where a unknown thing is chasing a command of mercenaries and the exorcist considered as the scariest movie ever created, are just some examples of the golden age of horror. At the end of the 1990s, a starting point was marked for the digital of cinema. In the beginning, transforming analog pictures into digital ones in order to manipulate them with a computer was something reserved solely to improve the special effects of a particular production. The digital revolution has only just begun, but three different fronts must be clearly distinguished to understand what is happening and what we still have to see. The elaboration of virtual pictures by computer is what will continue to allow us to enjoy images as incredible as that of the Spider-Man saga. The one mentioned lately is with the first movie that we start, Spider-Man. It all started in 2002 with Sam's Raimi Spider-Man, where he is shown as Peter Parker, who was represented by Tobey Maguire, where we are told how Peter Parker was a normal boy, where he they did a lot of bullying. Until a spider beat him and he began to have super spider powers. Then, in the second part of 2004, he tells us about how Peter's life, his life being Spider-Man. And as a normal person where his love part is divided into two trying to reconcile with Mary Jane and the other from his part of superhero. Since he begins to have many conflicts alone and even decides to stop being Spider-Man but seeing the increase in crime rates. He returns to the course of to defeat the villains but especially one to Dr. Octopus. And in the third and last part in 2007, in this last one, Peter continues with his life. That is improving, but the 
Treats do not stop first a meteorite, hits him or symbiote to the suite and makes him more aggressive. But at the same time, his best friends, he, the Green Globin, attacks him. Signs he thinks it was Peter who killed his father and wants revenge at it. This movie, The Sandman, also appears where Peter will have to live of those problems while trying to restore your relationship. After this first Spider-Man trick, came more movies like The Amazing Spider-Man, directed by Mark Webb, and this time Peter Parker was Andrew Gar Garfield, where two movies were realized, one in 2012 and the other in 2014. They came the stage of the Avengers where now a new Spider-Man appeared, this time made by Tom Holland, where after the Endgame movie, Spider-Man Homecoming, directed by John Watts. Then in 2019, Spider-Man Far From Home came out and the last of out and the last one come came out was Spider-Man No Way Home last year. Now Let's talk about another well-known movie, made in 2009, Avatar. This movie is directed by James Cameron and stars Sam Worthington, Sue Saldana, Sigourney Weber, Stephen Lang and Michelle Rodriguez. It is set in the year 2154 and the events it narrates take place of Pandora, a moon of a planet Polyphemus. Inhabited by a, a human noid, race called Navi. With one humans are in conflict because one of their clans is celted around of a gigantic tree that covers an immense vein of a highly valued mineral, and that would suppose the solution to the energetic problems of theirs on a tiny moon. Jake Sully, a marine who was paralyzed is selected to participate in the Avatar project that transport the minds of scientists to artificial body of Navi so that communication with the native is easier. During the search for trust between Jake and the Navis, Jake must be approved by the truth and experience all the relationship with the forest, fauna and flora that the natives have along with their consumes and language. Despite the scientific end of the project, Colonel Quaritch, who leads the defense of the human base of Pandora, convinced Jake to prove to provide him with information about the natives in case force it need to remove them. At first Jake fulfills his mission professionally, but falls in love with one of the natives, Natiri and realize that they will never give up their land, making an armed conflict inevitable. He must decide which side he is on. This year, it is being said that they are going to realize the second part of Avatar. Thanks for joining us in this special chapter of the Geek Experience. Don't forget to listen our podcast daily, where we normally talk about the cinema news to inform you of your favorite movies and series. The Geek Experience is Pablo Andrés Sebastián Parra Céspedes, Juan Felipe Hernández, and Juan Diego Ramírez. See you next time.